This is Mark Scheller, real estate broker in St. Louis, Missouri. Today, I am inviting you on a journey with me to unpack school rankings, what the rankings mean, and how you can choose the best school for you, not for everyone else, for you. After all, my school is the best. No way, my school is the best. Oh no, your school is the best? There are so many opinions. For years, school rankings were determined by a series of standardized tests. But along came the internet, which changed everything. Do you want to know the truth about schools and how they are ranked? If so, stay with me for those topics and more next. So let's talk about school rankings and here is some context. My background for years has been to help between 15 and 30 families a year move to the St. Louis region. And what they always ask about is education and safety scores. So the pressure is on for we realtors to have accurate information that we can share with strangers to our community. In 2005, I would go to Jefferson City, which is about 120 miles that way, and I would get the school scores myself out of three ring binders. The state would grade schools based on things like their academic map scores, their ACT, SAT scores, teacher student ratios, the average number of years of experience for the teachers and expenditures like how much per student per year that they were spending on children's education. Pretty good metrics, I would say. Then the internet changed everything. It opened up schools to parent feedback, almost like Yelp when you go to a restaurant and you like it or you don't. The parents were reporting things like, the bus was cold. There was jelly on the lunchroom table. My child is allergic to peanuts and that idiot child brought in a snicker bar. No! And then if my third grade son was failing mathematics, clearly it was the fault of the teacher who had been teaching mathematics at the school for 24 years. What we noticed was that nearly all of the feedback was negative and all of the school scores were being driven down into the ground by disappointed parents. That is so sad. So there was room for change. And then about 10 years ago, a new website business model was designed to add in social components not related to actual academic learning at all. And the question for those websites became, how can we get online school rankings to include all facets of what each individual website decided that a school should be? As an example, the new website algorithms would downgrade a high achieving school if they did not provide a high percentage of free breakfasts and free lunches to their students. And then the always controversial topics of equity and race and gender and low income and disabilities and any other subjects that are within the social current, those topics would rapidly move school rankings sharply up or sharply down. So I pose to you a question. Should a high school ranking be raised or lowered if the school has a daycare for its students' newborn babies? How about whether or not the high school has a weight room? Should that change school scores? Should an elementary school ranking be lowered if the students are not from low-income families? I propose those to be real solid questions to ask when you are comparing schools. So what's important to you and your family? And what's important to the future resale value of what most people would consider their largest investment, which is their home? For an experienced realtor like me, I have the responsibility to match the customer's needs with the right information. Does that make sense? The scholastic-based rankings from the state of Missouri are coming at you right now. It is time to reveal the 10 highest rated school districts in the St. Louis region. This will be based off of standardized test scores. So here we go. The 10th highest scoring school district is Francis Howe 
which is a huge district with 23 schools and over 17,000 students. The ninth best district in the region is Wentzville with many new schools and proving that if you build it, they will come. The eighth best school district is Fort Zumwalt with over 18,000 students and hundreds of thousands of past graduates. The seventh highest rated district is Washington, Missouri with 122 years of teaching students about the world. The sixth best district is Kirkwood, which has a remarkable history of retaining experienced teachers. The fifth highest scoring district is Lindbergh, where many of their students are high flyers. The fourth highest scoring district is Rockwood, which is the region's largest district with over 22,000 students. The third highest scoring district is Parkway Schools with over 75 years of educational excellence. The second highest scoring district is Ladue, spending a whopping $27,000 per student per year. And the number one highest scoring district in the St. Louis region is da -da -da -dum, the Clayton District, where thousands of students have started their paths to Ivy League schools. Ranking schools used to be factual and it was backed by hard data from standardized testing. There was no arguing about it, but now ranking schools has become so subjective and it's based on what that particular website finds to be important to you. That way, each website can design the experiment around the conclusion that they want. So please, please, when you research school scores, make sure to understand what criteria that site is using for their opinions of what the rankings should be. I have met hundreds of consumers who make school conclusions right off of their phones. They move in, they find out they were dead wrong, but by then it's too late because they already own the house. If you appreciate this content from me and you want more, like me, and then click the subscribe button below. This has been Mark Scheller reminding you to get educated about school scores. Thank you for watching, everybody. Bye for now.